Hi guys, so I was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and about whether to do this video, whether to just leave it be. And I've never been the type of person to let things just talk about things and get it off my chest. I've always been one to hold my feelings in and until, you know, a few years back. And I, I just, I said I cannot live my life like that. It's not healthy for one. And so when things start happening with Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, countless others, Sandra, and now two more of our brothers are gone that we know that we know about that's reached the front page that's reached the internet and back to back we haven't forgotten about Trayvon Martin, we haven't forgotten about Michael Brown, we haven't forgotten about Rosa Parks, we haven't forgotten about Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, we haven't forgotten about all of the people th whose lives have been slain. I tell you a story. I went to a new nail salon and got my nails done and there was a nice lady in there. There it was very slow in there when I went in. There were two older white women in there and I spoke. One lady said hi, the other lady didn't. And I end up speaking to the one lady that spoke. And we had a very good conversation. And when her services were complete, and she, you know, excused herself and went to the restroom, and she came back, and she said to me, you know, we're starting to get a few black people around this area and it's going very well and I told my daughter about this and I didn't take offense to it because People aren't educated, like my daughter said, people aren't educated on how to talk about certain issues, right? So you probably wonder what my response was to that lady. My mother raised me to have respect for my older people, regardless of race. And so I said to the lady, I said, yeah, I said that thought ran through my mind when I came over here to get my nails done that I was hoping that this area liked black people. So when you hear us say that black lives matter that's what that means 
when you move somewhere and I'm talking to my white counterparts you don't have to wonder am I gonna be welcome here because of the color of my skin when you're going into a predominantly white area you don't have to wonder that you don't have to wonder can I go in here and get my nails done because I'm white? You don't have to go into a store and have the salesperson follow you around in that store because they're trying to make sure that you're not going to steal anything because of the color of your skin. You don't hesitate to check white on your application and hope that you get an interview. <laughs> you don't have to go into the mall or anywhere or Walmart for that matter and have people do a double take because they're not used to seeing white people but we do I should not have to have thought wonder if it's okay for me to go in this nail shop and get my nails done in this area. That thought should have never had come across my mind. We're in America for God's sakes. The land of the home and the the home of the free and the brave. I don't feel too free right now. Not every one of my white counterparts are racist. I'm intelligent enough to know that. My people are intelligent enough to know that. I saw on Facebook where there were white people that was very upset because those two gentlemen were murdered by the police. When you hear us say that black lives matter, we don't want you to take away from that statement to say that no other races lives matter. It's, it's not that. It's just this is one of those type of situations where you literally have to put yourself in another person's shoes and I've been sitting and I've been thinking I was at work and I'm thinking like how can we put it so that other people understand where we're coming from where our feelings are coming from where our frustration is coming from where our anger is coming from and, and the only thing that I could come up with is if you compare it to let's say um, let's say 
the most hateful person that you can think of in your family okay so maybe it's, it's a mother-in-law maybe it's a father-in-law maybe it was even your your mother or your father and they treated you like an outsider okay say it's a, a step parent sit type situation and, and we all familiar with that type of scenario where you know the the kids may be treated a certain type of way by that step parent that's not right okay um and that that step parent makes that child makes you do all the dirty work but their kid get to do everything they get the new car they get the brand new clothes they get the fancy hairstyles they get the best college education but you over here you gotta wear hand-me-downs you have to wear that kid's you know uh, old clothes you know you have to go to a, a junior college how would that make you feel just think about that for a second and you put your all into you know putting your best foot forward you do everything that you are supposed to do so that you can be accepted so that you can be looked upon as being a respectable person a worthy person well if you've done that and you real finally realize wow I get it this is what we've been going through for over 400 years and it's still in existence today when do we have to stop proving ourselves when do we have to let people know that hey just like you guys have bad people in your in your race we do too but guess what there's so many more good people in our race that outweigh the bad and we just want you guys to focus in on the good that we provide the good that we do the good that we stand for and stop looking at oh yeah there's some, another black person that stuck up a bank not all of us stick up banks not all of us go kill people not all of us are thugs or gangsters just like in your community not all of you guys are trailer trash not all of you guys are racist not all of you guys whatever is bad we just want some of that everyone else get that opportunity except for us now I want to talk about the shooting of the police officers in Dallas that should have never happened yes we're frustrated yes we're angry Yes, we want somebody to pay attention to us and say, hey, we know you guys have been done wrong. But being violent is not the answer. Now I'm speaking to my people. Violence is not the answer 
for us to be able to overcome this. We took away the impact that was supposed, that happened for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. And when we retaliated like that, we diminished what needed to happen. So now we took the focus off of our brothers and we put it on and gave that empathy and that sympathy to the person or the, the, the police officers that should be held accountable for taking their lives. We can't fight it like that. We got to do this thing with love. We got to come together as a people. We got to stand united in love, in understanding, in caring. We got to stop the black on black violence with each other. Until we learn how to love each other, we can't ask another race to love us. A lot of people don't want to stand up and understand that you got to take a stand somewhere. But we first got to clean up our own house. You got to stop looking at your sister with envy and jealousy and and conniving and we we got to stop doing so much stuff to each other. Our brothers, we got to start taking up for your sister. And I'm not talking about your blood sister, okay? You see somebody disrespecting your, your, your sister, you need to stand up and say, okay, we're not going to do that. And do it in a respectable manner. There's a way to do everything without causing drama, without having to go to jail, without having to kill someone. There's a way to do everything. Let's love each other and stop killing each other. Let's support each other and stop tearing each other down. And it's got to start in the home first. It's got to start with our families first. Let's push each other up and stop pulling each other down. Let's encourage each other. Let's show each other how to do things. If you know how to get a, a, a job where somebody can come off of the system, show them. Stop holding secrets. In order for us to combat this hate that we fighting against, white people, Asians, Japanese, Koreans, Hispanics, Mexicans, blacks, whites, you, whoever you are, you got to understand how all this thing work. God made different races because he wanted us to learn from each other. I keep telling you guys this over and over and over and over and over. And nobody's hearing me. Nobody's hearing God. He made the different races for us to learn how to l learn from each other. How to love each other. 
He loves us in spite of. That's the reason why he made different races. How you gonna love him and you can't love somebody that look different from you? How? And you can't see him? But you can see me. Would you do it if he was standing next to you? Would you look at me with despise if God was standing right there next to you? Guess what? He is. He see everything you do. He hear every hateful word that you say about another race. And it don't just have to be us because I hear how, how people talk about the Asians and, and the Koreans and, and anybody that's different from the white man. You think you're going to get into heaven because of that? Just because you white, you think you in? You ain't. And yes, I said ain't. When someone, I told my daughter, I said when someone is pushing against something that they're afraid of that's because that something that they're afraid of has so much power my black brothers and sisters we have so much power if we come together if we stand together We can do this. We can overcome this. But God is not going to let it happen until we come together. Until we come first back under Him. We have to first come back to Him. And then it's a domino effect after that. We have to find a solution. Stop pointing the finger. Stop saying this, 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 this. Okay. What is the solution? What do we need to do in order to stop the killing? What do we have to do to fix ourselves? Find out and do it. I'm tired of this. Every time you turn around, somebody getting killed. Whether it be by the police or by our own hand. Or by somebody else's hand. Somebody getting raped. Somebody just, it's, it's got to stop. And I'm so frustrated. Because this is not the way God intended it to be. Now that man is gone and his baby girl is without a father. This got to do something to you on the inside. We're not animals. We're people. We have hearts. We love. We bleed. We have moms. We have dads. We have sisters. We have brothers, daughters, sons.
comparison is not bad. Can you just take us as we are, as God made us? We're willing to take you how you are. We just want a fair shake in this thing called life. you to know that black lives matter. We want love. We want better things in life just like you do. Just like you have dreams, we have dreams too. Just for once, just say, we're sorry for the way we treated you guys. We're sorry for the way that we treated black people. That's all, just a sorry. Just to say, I'm sorry. It's got to start somewhere. We got to start somewhere. If we all, just one by one, just one by one, just open your hearts. If there's anything you want to know about our culture, just ask. We'll do the same. But we, nobody's going anywhere. The killing's got to stop. It's open season on us. And it's got to stop. God made us. for a reason just like he made you for a reason because our lives matter too it's a shame that we even have to have a slogan like that no superior being okay God made us all equal there's no superior being just all lives matter Okay, that's all we saying is all lives matter and we want our lives to be as meaningful as you know your life is. We need love all throughout this nation and we gotta do God's will before it's too late black people stop killing each other other races understand who we are understand our plight The sooner we do these things, the better off our lives will be on, on this earth. And know that I love you, regardless of your race, your nationality, 
or your background, whether you rich or poor. I love you because God said I'm supposed to love you. He stands for love. And if you love him, you have to love me. You have to love us. Just no more killing, please.